Have you ever seen anything like this before? A former GOP presidential candidate eviscerating the leading candidate in his own party. Now, Mitt Romney's speech started fairly traditionally. Back in 1964, uh, just days before the presidential election, which incidentally we lost, Ronald Reagan went on national t uh, television and uh, challenged America, saying that it was a time for choosing. But the tone turned and fast. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. But you say, wait, wait, wait. Isn't he a huge business success? Doesn't he know what he's talking about? No, he isn't. A business genius, he is not. This recklessness is recklessness in the extreme. Think of Donald Trump's personal qualities. The bullying, the greed, the showing off, the misogyny, the absurd third grade theatrics. He's playing the members of the American public for suckers. He gets a free ride to the White House and all we get is a lousy hat. Tell us how you really feel, Mitt. And then he tossed out this challenge. Watch, by the way, how he responds to my speech today. <laughs> will, he, uh, will he talk about our policy differences? Or will he attack me with every imaginable low road insult? This may tell you what you need to know about his temperament, his stability, and his suitability to be president. So how did Trump respond? Here it is. I heard that Mitt Romney made a fairly long speech. <laughs> and, and I mean, honestly, I thought I'll just address it quickly because it's irrelevant. Look, <laughs> Mitt is a failed candidate. He failed. He failed horribly. He let us down. He should have won. So with Mitt, I just wanted to tell you that he came out, it was very nasty. I mean, I thought he was a better person than that. You can see how loyal he is. He was begging for my endorsement. I could have said, Mitt, drop to your knees. He would have dropped to his knees. He was begging. Oh my goodness. Joining me now to talk about this and the media's role in this cage match are <laughs> WGBH special correspondent Emily Rooney. Hi, Emily. Hey. WGBH news reporter Adam Riley. Good to see you too, Adam. Hey, so what was your reaction to this thing? And will it have any impact mm -hmm. at all on uh, Trump? First of all, I, I, I really thought he did a good job with this. I thought he was direct, he was honest, I thought he was on point, and I think that message is going to sink in with a number of people. I think they're going to listen to that again. Voters or? Uh... Voters. Voters. You know, people talk about failure as if it's, you know, some mark of, you know, some black blight. And everybody has had failures. Name, name, name me the person who hasn't, including Donald Trump. How many bankruptcies has he had? How many failed casinos has he I mean. Failure is, is not a, you know, a disastrous mark on your career. So do you think this is going to be an impact? Every criticism that's ever been directed at him, his numbers it only have makes gone him stronger, up. Yeah. Right? I, uh, I agree with Emily that it was a really good speech by Mitt Romney. I mean, it was as withering a denunciation of Donald Trump as you could possibly get. It's like a prosecutor's closing argument yes. almost, yeah. point by point by point. It was really, really well done. I don't know that the voters who have flocked to Donald Trump, who want to reject the Republican establishment, are going to hear this case made by a guy who kind of embodies the Republican establishment and say, oh, we're making a mistake. Now, he said at the top, his first sentence, I think, was, this is not an announcement, not an endorsement. Was it? I mean, why did he give this speech? Is he hoping that he's the one they turn to? No, I don't think so. This reminded me of what happened when the, we had the accident in the big dig tunnel, the ceiling fell mm -hmm. down. And he came in, he said, get out of my way to Matt Amarello and other people who were... Head of the just, uh, big dig at the time. Couldn't yeah. get their act together about that. He came in and he, he... Mitt Romney acted like a bully then. And in some respects, that's what I see him doing now. And, you know, he, 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 he's the only one who, in some respects, could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump. You know what I see is I actually think there's a chance he might hope that the convention is deadlocked and he ends up being called on to be the nominee. He, no, he didn't say get behind one candidate. No. He said we need to find common ground. That being said, I think this fits this archetype that Mitt Romney has relied on his whole life. He sees himself as a turnaround artist. That was the name of his 2004 biography, Turnaround. Turning around places in his business career, turning around the Olympics, turning around Massachusetts when he knocked Jane Swift out of yep. the way, acting like a bully yep. and You're don't think a hypocrisy issue here? I mean, he did uh, seek the endorsement of Donald Trump. He did. He did. He was the uh, victim of a, a totally baseless attack about his taxes, By just Harry like Reed. he's now doing. I mean, 
mean, it's almost like he's flip flopping gets a bad name. What's yeah. that? So you can change your mind. I said flip flopping okay. gets a bad name. In terms of seeking the endorsement, it was very interesting. Kevin Madden, the former Romney yeah. senior strategist, all the time. tweeted today that he thought it was a mistake to have not acknowledged that endorsement and said something about it. Okay, so that's the former governor. The current governor yesterday said, I am not voting for Donald Trump. And he said, I'm not even sure that Trump is going to be the ultimate nominee. Then he had an interesting exchange with the reporters, including you. Yeah, that was me. Today. today. <laughs> Listen to this. Thoughts on uh, Romney today? Uh, I didn't hear Romney today. You didn't watch it? No. I actually have a day job and I spend most of my time doing it. I have some quotes. Uh, and I'm, not gonna, I'm not interested in talking Governor about this. You guys want to talk to me Trump about my day job, that's fine. But I'm not going to talk bully. about this Read stuff. I've already stuff. made my opinion about yeah. Donald Trump. But I'm right wondering if Mitt Romney said that Donald Trump is neither later. the temperament Governor. nor the judgment to be president. Do you agree? Is that your voice in there? That was my voice. That was your voice. Yeah. What do you make of this? I mean, he seemed really agitated. He and you almost seem, never see him that way anymore. Really agitated. I got to say at the outset, I am to an extent sympathetic with Governor Baker. I think he wants to put his head down, do his job by all accounts. The people of Massachusetts think he's doing it really well. That being said, the Republican Party is in a pitched battle over its future right now. He, as the governor of Massachusetts, as a guy who endorsed Chris Christie, who then turned into this bizarre Donald Trump automaton when he dropped out of the race, he doesn't have the luxury of saying nothing. This isn't going to go away. Other people are going to keep asking. You with him? I'm not with him at all. I think he's brilliant to do this. And I think most of the voters in Massachusetts is probably with him on this. And it's all the reporters and the editorial writers that say, insisting that he has to get involved. No, he doesn't. Okay, let's go to another CEO. He's not running a state. He's running a big media corporation, Les Moonves, president of CVS. Here he is. Uh, it may not be good for America, but it's damn good for CVS. Man, who would have expected the ride we're all having right now? The money's rolling and this is fun. Now, he fueled this whole notion that we're complicit, we're enablers, all of us and thousands like us, in this whole Trump thing. I have to say, I am not buying it. Of course, there's Joe Scarborough. I know you talked it. about last Friday. I don't buy that no. at all. Do you? There's no way Les Moonves or any other network news executive could have predicted that somebody like Donald Trump could have brought money like it has into in any form or shape, especially for the debates. I mean, how, w when was a debate ever considered entertainment? Look at you, how in excited you are about staying up a I couple am. extra hours tonight to watch so that late thing. For me, yes. He never could have predicted it. So was it kind of impolitic for him to say that? Yes, but it's true. You know, we're going to hear this today too, but you know, he didn't invite Mitt Romney to eviscerate him, and obviously right. that's the story. Right. Tonight, obviously he's the centerpiece. Yeah. And you know, it, it, my sense is, you know, when I listen to Romney today, and at the same time was hearing people on our radio show criticizing us like I'm just raising, I'm saying, I knew every single thing on Mitt Romney's li <laughs> list. Why? Because the media's reported yeah. it. So are we guilty as charged? I mean, I think no? you got to look at the different ways that the press has covered him. I think if you are hosting a Sunday show and you let Trump call in, Again and again. Without I totally agree come with that. to you. I agree. I think it's very fair to question when that. the other candidates weren't allowed to do that early on. Well, if you, if you cover, uh, say, a rally at which Trump supporters pushed and shoved this young black woman while Trump was standing there saying, "Back in the old days, and it wasn't so long ago, we wouldn't have stood for that. We have to be so nice now, so nice." If you cover that and say, "Hey, what does this tell us about who's supporting Donald Trump and where we're heading if he's president?" I think that's an important thing to cover. So all coverage is not created equal. Uh, but so I have to say that, that Donald Trump has made himself accessible. We've had this conversation a couple times, Jim, much more than any other candidate. There's a standoffish, uh, an aloofness. We've seen it with other candidates in the past. Elizabeth Warren, for instance, uh, Hillary Clinton. Well, and also he, many of the current presidential he, candidates. He, even the other night during his speech, have you ever in your life seen somebody doing an accept, acceptance speech and then turn to the media and say, do you have any questions? And he stays there until every single person asks whatever question they want. He does it with every rally. He has either he does not do press that with every rally. I, a I've lot of rallies, rallies where we, I was at a rally where we were kept in a pen, not allowed to even leave the building as he met and greeted his supporters. I was he didn't take questions uh, from I, but yeah, one last I went thing, to one but, where he did, though. But the one criticism that I've heard uh, on the radio and elsewhere is, yeah, we ask the questions, we don't ask the follow-up. And I have to say, we had him on the radio for 10 minutes, and you are making a calculation. How much can I do? How far can I probe? How much can I do follow-up? How many topics? I'm not faulting the press on this. You don't think there's no. criticism? I think they've pushed as hard as they Look what happened to Megyn Kelly when she pushed him. She, she came right back with the facts. That, you know? yes, she, she did, she did, she did, she did as debate. good a job following up as anyone has. I think it's tough because so many of us in the media are trained to not say anything that sounds accusatory or like opinion. And if you had a chance to say to Donald Trump, 
Mr. Trump, how do you justify this racist, xenophobic rhetoric you've been trafficking in since the beginning of your campaign? You, you do make those calculations. Yeah, but You're I don't think people should be characterizing things with those kinds of uh, descriptors. No? Even if that's I what it is. I think they should be asking questions based on... No, but you I don't say to them, you're a xenophobe. At this point. You state the facts and you ask the question. I think you could say... But, and by the way, just so you know that I'm not pointing a finger at you, I had a chance to, to get this close yeah. to him at one event. And what I asked him about was, Mitt Romney today said that you're not going to be the nominee of the Republican Party. What's your response to that? I didn't ask him the question that I was just suggesting we could ask. But I do think that we've never seen a candidate like him. And it's OK, I think, to say, are you a xenophobe? Emily, oh, also, I just want to say, in the beginning, the media was so skeptical. It was like clown college. Yeah. You know, that's how we Huffington Post, Post on the entertainment page. put it on this. So, you know, this, the media has morphed over time and changed the way they cover them. You better be careful with Baker. You're going to be in the press pen. <laughs> and good to see you, Emily, and good to see you.